Last time on the Lazy Geckos. We headed out to the west coast to start our search. We're looking for a new boat and the west coast might be the spot. Sunny skies, cool breeze, Cali baby. Then we went along to the SoCal Boat Show where we toured a beautiful Lagoon 42. We also took you for a ghost hunt aboard the famous Queen Mary, also known as the Grey Ghost. Make sure you check it out. Two thousand two Valiant Fifty is uh, commissioned by the owners. Did a custom interior on it. They eliminated the forward head, has only one head, so it has an expanded living space interior. Um, they took the area of the boat in Seattle, Washington, and commissioned it there and sailed it up around Vancouver Island. Back down, they've been living aboard in Ventura for the last 12 years, and now they've moved off and moved on to shore, and it's time to sell the boat. We actually looked at Valiance before we bought the Gecko. Beautiful boats. Um, prior years have string problems, certain numbers, not this one. It's out of that category because it's a newer boat. It kind of reminds me of how the Gecko set up, but obviously on a much larger scale. It's really the woodwork that really gets that going for me. But the V-berth back there, and you got your galley, and then you have your navigation. Also, these turn into berths. Obviously, it's much larger but you also have your aft cabin much bigger um, then you have one head in here even though it's a larger boat but it's absolutely gorgeous I know it's a monohull we're kind of making the tip to catamarans but you know it's always good to look at all your options and this is definitely a beautiful option on board my sailboat. Nothing like this, I love this, especially because I put my dogs on it and I take them out all the time. I'm on the East Coast, so a lot of island hopping. But can you tell me about this? This is awesome. Yeah, sure, this is the 2018 Hobie Eclipse. It's a paddle board that you pedal. So you don't use a hand paddle like you traditionally would on a regular paddle board. This is powered by the Hobie Mirage Drive, which is a set of fins under the board and you steer it using the little brake handles. The advantage about the Hobie Eclipse is that it's very stable. Yep. You have something to hang on to the whole time and compared to most paddle boards it's quite fast. Like it doesn't take a lot it of skill. It looks very fast compared to what I'm uh -huh. used to. I also see you have a pedaling right here that's more like canoe like it kind of seems like. Yeah this, this is kayak, a more traditional kayak design right here. So this you just sit down on it. This is a called a Hobie I-11S. It's an inflatable kayak. This uses the same technology as that. Instead of uh, standing on the pedals, however, you pedal them forwards and backwards like this. This is what it looks like right here. Like that. That's actually what drives both this I-11 right here and I-Eclipse. May I try this one out? Yeah, sure, of course. 
to steer, there's a little switch on the left hand side right there that controls the rudder. Left is left and right is right. Uh -huh. Easy to maneuver, like the little handle was not confusing at all like it is on a dinghy, you know it's opposite, it actually goes with the way that you want to go. I was able to do like a sweet little maneuver in there, and as soon as I heard another boat coming, I was able to turn quickly, which I like, you know, because on a paddleboard you're like, oh crap, and you're paddling, and it was really nice, I could totally see the dogs going on that without an issue. That needs to be our dinghy. It is way smaller than an actual dinghy. We can just hop on that, strap the dog on, and go. All the great white sharks that are in the water here. <laughs> nice. Cheers. Need some shots in there. There you oh, go. Oh. Oh. The that was bad done? luck. Oh, <laughs> it was bad luck. You're right. Well, we're just sitting down to have a beer. It's our day two at the boat show. We see the little sailboats over there, and I was reminiscing about my classes. I can't believe that I was able to dock one of those boats under sail. That's pretty awesome. Boat show's going well, second day is a lot busier. Um, trying to get a showing right now on a boat that we really, really like. We have viewed some monohauls and catamarans. Still itching for a catamaran, but the beauty of a monohaul is still there, of course. It's just we have a large family. <laughs> and I want that extra room. This is something like we have, as you can tell with the seat, and it's the same exact thing, except for we have a Carib which is right here. This bad boy is awesome. The DL-12. We have a brand new event called the Arc Pacific. LA to Cabo, and then Cabo to French Polynesia. Wow. <laughs> so year one. Here's a fleet viewer of our uh, regular Arc. The Arc is a group of sailboats that make major passages together. We've always considered joining one. These rallies are more based for cruisers yeah. versus and that's racers. What we are. Yeah. yeah. LA to Cabo, five to six days. Five days over in Cabo, San Lucas. Set off as a fleet. About three weeks is probably the average time it will take the boats to go from Cabo to, to the Marquesas. We leave you off there. I mean, free to cruise, but it's also just times up with our World Art, which is a 15 month yeah. sailing rally around the world. So you have the option if you wanted to join in with the World Arc, continue around. That is great. So this is new over here. The Arc Pacific is brand new. March 3rd is the first first time it's going. March 3rd, wow. 2018. We have seven confirmed boats, but we're hoping it's going to be about 15 to 20 boats for year one. And you're like a group setting, right? Group so setting, you're... whole social aspect, put trackers on the boats, safety checks on the boats, seminars beforehand. So when you sign up, does your boat have to meet requirements? Yes, that's okay. one of the biggest things with our sailing rallies. We're really known for our safety. So we require certain, you know, life rafts and flares and radar reflectors and AIS transponders. I like that. It's very good. I mean, that's one of the major reasons people join us is for that safety aspect. About 10% of our boats have our family boats and bring kids along. The youngest that's ever been on uh, one of our rallies was eight months old. Oh my goodness. The oldest, awesome. oldest was 84. So, wow. and they were actually okay. on the same boat. That is cool. So, the youngest and oldest making yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for telling me no about problem. it. I appreciate it. I kind of want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> sign up. We'll do it. Arc it's Pacific. awesome. Okay, so that was the Southern California Boat Show. Yeah, second year running. We thought it was great. Yeah. We've been to now Annapolis, Miami, and that one. Yeah. All wonderful. This one was a bit smaller, but we actually enjoyed it because we could really focus on the areas we wanted to focus on. And we were able to get through it in a day and then go back again and go through the same type of thing, focusing on what we really, we really like. Yeah, it was really cool. They still had a lot of the little uh, kiosks and stuff like that. And it wasn't you know, so populated that you couldn't get up to one. So that was a good thing. Oh yeah, and yeah. a ton 
of sailboats here more than you could even imagine or what we thought. It's impressive. Yeah, for the, for the size of the show, it did have a lot of sailboats. How about that lagoon? Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Yeah. Way out of our price range, brand new. It's crazy how much those things cost oh new, man. Oh my gosh. I was a little bit shocked as like the quality as far as some of the stuff. Like I went on one and it wasn't a lagoon, but I went on one and the through hall, it looks like a garden hose spigot. It didn't look yeah. as like solid, but I guess you know we have to kind of get used to that because it's not going to be like a Allberg, you know. Yeah, the newer. Uh, I think we're looking for a bit newer, and we might sway towards a cat. It's very impressive as far as like space yeah. and entertainment, and that's what we do. You know, we love to have people on board and kind of hang out. So I, I'm I'm excited. Yeah, one another thing I was really surprised about that we haven't had any uh, experience with was how big this marina was. This Huge. thing is massive. We have not seen a marina this size anywhere in Florida. It's funny, when we first started, um, we figured we have to do it on the East Coast. That's where all sailing is. And the more that we've like broadened our horizons as we're looking for a boat, they're sailing all over the place. And I never imagined that sailing was so big here. I'm it's sure huge. you can see in the background all the mast. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, it's huge marina. Beautiful. And all these keels out here are like eight feet plus. I know, uh, it's so deep. Yeah. You do have the great whites, but um, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll be swimming if we get a boat out here. So. No, but it's exciting. So happy to be experiencing this and seeing all the salt life that you see over here. All right, so you ready to see the next one? I am. Let's roll. Let's go. Next time on the Lazy Geckos. We go offshore with the heading of due west. Come with us as we explore this amazing little island just off the Southern California coast. Then of course, we take you sailing. Lovely winds with an amazing view. But not before we go searching for the secrets this location holds. See you next time. Please consider becoming a patron if you enjoy all we do. Want more? Then check out Vimeo. Don't forget you can always donate via PayPal.